Hey, 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 everybody. It is I Hope to Zell Hope Disguised on the YouTube streets. And I am coming at y'all with my two month post SRS update. Okay. So, for all y'all who are going to be like, oh my God, them earrings are so cute. I love the earrings. The earrings came from my girl, True Face by Grace. She hooked me up with these. I love these. They are giving African map realness. And I absolutely adore them, okay? I love them. They're super cool. You can customize them by taking off maps. You can, you know, add maps to other pieces if you want to do what you need to do. So they're fully customizable. I absolutely love them. And they are super, super chic, super dope. I can do it with my hair pulled up, kind of sort of sleek moment. And I'm feeling them. But this ain't about my earrings. This is about me being two months post-op. And I'm coming today to give y'all my thoughts and opinions about things that you should know, things that I wish I would have known going into surgery and being really in depth about the things that I would have needed afterwards. Now, one of the biggest things that people ask me about first and foremost is dilation. Okay, so people ask me about dilation. Dilation fucking sucks immediately after surgery. But honestly, once you are done with like those that first like maybe week, maybe week and a half, two weeks of dilation, you start to become what I like to call like a little bit of a dilation pro. Um, and so it gets a lot easier to do it when you are doing it more frequently. Now, for those people who don't know what dilation is, dilation is the process of using things that are phallic shaped in order to keep the vaginal canal open uh, while your you know, your new neo vagina is still healing and all of that good stuff. Um, should you be a person who's chosen to get that part? Because there are some uh, girls uh, or non-binary folks who have opted to get the vaginal plasty without the actual like depth there's no need for depth because they don't see themselves utilizing it so my doctor mr judah poku gave me this really cute little pouch like you know like this is like the cutest little dilator pouch i've seen like it's all nice and chic or whatnot now my dilators are not as fun as everybody else's dilators to be perfectly honest i was disappointed at first but now not so much i'm actually kind of happy about it now i got five of these little dilator puppies and I use two of them. So I'm going to show you all the three that I don't use just because you got me fucked up. Um, and then the two that I do use are in my bathroom and I didn't feel like grabbing them because I'm lazy, but you'll get the point. So essentially I got five of these and they're all just plain little white porcelain, little phallic shaped objects. And you use them in the beginning stages of your um, SRS, like after you're done with it, to keep everything open. Now, this one, I have tried it just for fuck's sake, you know, of, of, of fuckity fuck's sake. And I'm not going to put this in my vagina because I don't want my vagina to be stretched out. Um, the whole purpose of the uh, use of dilators is to retain the length of the vaginal canal. Your body will naturally accommodate for width as long as there's enough lubrication happening, as long as you take your time and all of that good jazz. And what enough doctors are not telling you and what a lot of doctors are not telling you, what a lot of the girls on the YouTube are not telling you is that you don't need to be able to fit this huge thing up inside you in order to be able to accommodate your partner because width can be, you know, like worked through the same way that you work through with, with, you know, a regular or, um, biological vagina or, or like even if you're training for anal sex like width can be given right but my thing is when you are you know when you've had your vaginal canal shaped out for you there's not a lot that they can do about depth if you are not training that depth on a regular basis so you don't need to be out here trying to ram this thing into you for all of my young girls who are doing this because you want to be able to facilitate a big old penis you know what i'm saying like you don't need to be out here doing this, right? Like this is an option. If you want to be out here doing this, do this, but you don't need to. It is not a requirement. So don't be trying to force these things up and into your vagina because it's not necessary. With this, something that you can get later, the length ain't going, you, you know, like if, one, if you don't do this, if you don't dilate, there's nothing that you can do about, you know, length. This one is the one that's like right 
before the biggest one and still to me it was a little bit too big and too hard and too plasticky for me to be trying to like make this work like if you hear these right like these are really rigid they're super hard and if you know anything about the pelvic bone what they don't tell you until after you have the surgery is that they're the way that you have to dilate is that you angle down right in order to get in and then you can kind of like go up into the vaginal canal and i've never heard that until after i had the surgery even when my doctor was prepping me before surgery my doctor didn't say like how dilation would have to happen or that there would be like a special like angle or anything like that it was just oh like you're gonna have the surgery you'll dilate and then things will be better in six months to a year right but nobody tells you until you actually have to do it that there's like a special angle in which you have to use to get into the vagina and then go up so once again i didn't see the need for this big old thing because whatever the ones that i use are the ones that are a little bit bigger than this so this is the initial one i didn't see a point in, in using this one when my doctor initially started me uh with a uh, dilation he inserted this one for me and we didn't have any issues getting this one in and so the next day when i had to dilate myself um or dilate by myself completely by myself i went ahead and went the one size up so think about this one and think about how these two kind of sort of gradually go up from another and then put two, you know, sizes that are in between this one in between it. I could go grab it y'all, but I'm very lazy. Don't judge me. I do not feel like getting up. I got all my supplies for this video and I just forgot to grab those two. Charge it to my head, not my heart, but I wish I would have known these things before. So the one thing that I will say that I also wish that I would have known, my doctor gifted me this, right? But just in case y'all did not know, right, the jelly lubricant is going to be ridiculously important for dilation. You do not want to have a water-based slick lubricant like the ones that you use for sex to do your dilation because it is completely different and it does change the way that things go in. Now, to be perfectly honest, y'all, I don't be using it no more. Like I used it like maybe at the beginning because I was afraid to break something. But now I just kind of diddle down there a little bit yeah <laughs> you know like I, I diddle down there a little bit you know things start to happen and then I can get her in without the lubricant but during that first week you know or that first two weeks when you're afraid to break some shit you know you you don't want to mess up your new vagina I will say that what I wish most of the girls had talked about was the style of lubricant jelly lubricant felt way better to me than when i tried to use the water-based lubricant just because the water-based lubricant doesn't have as much slip right um as far as holding on to the dilators as the jelly lubricant does when i put the jelly lubricant on it kind of just sits there it doesn't slide down the shaft and i can kind of sort it so when i put this on i'm not gonna waste lubricant but when i put this on i kind of sit it right on the tip and then I spread it around the tip, right? And it does not move because it's a jelly. The consistency is a little bit thicker and so it does not move. And then when I place it into my vagina, I can feel, right? Or like I was able to feel when I was using the lubricant that it was helping the, the flow of things. It felt like how my body feels now when I naturally like play with things down there and then like I'm able to go inside. That's kind of sort of what it feels like when you use the jelly lubricant. It does not feel the same way when I was using the water-based lubricant that kind of just slides down and everything gets all messy and your hands are all wet and slimy and I just didn't like that. And so I will say if your doctor has gifted you a jelly lubricant, use the jelly lubricant because it is going to be way better than you know going home and picking up your lube that you use for sex prior to and think that it's going to do the same thing it does not and especially if you're a girl who doesn't have the porcelain the, the porcelain you know dilators if you have those plasticky dilators child i can only imagine what that's going to feel going inside of you you know without a good jelly lubricant so you want to make sure that you have the right lubricant when you are getting ready to do your dilation because it makes all of the difference okay now another thing that i uh noticed that you are going to need that a lot of people don't talk about are your dishes okay now i don't dish crazy 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 because i don't have a bunch of smells coming out of there like 
I am getting to the point where I feel like my discharge is like little to none. Like if it's there, it's very like light. Um, it doesn't have a scent or anything like that. So I don't feel like there's any like more, you know, nasty mucus from healing or anything like that still happening. But it's doing what it does and it's doing how it does what it does when it wants to do. And every now and then, um, especially if you are a person who is going to be utilizing lubricants and all that stuff, you do just kind of want to, you know, clean everything out there and make sure that you're getting a nice, good jizz because you don't want to have stuff sitting up inside you and then that causes a smell or that causes like an outbreak or that causes anything. Um, the one thing I can say was like when I was getting prepared for surgery, like I talked to a couple of girls and they were just like, oh my God, the yeast infections, the yeast infections, the yeast infections. And I really think that it's really because girls are not cleaning the way that they're supposed to or they're not taking care of themselves. Remember, front to back, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I, because I have not had a yeast infection, I haven't had any you know, infections or itching or anything like that since I've gotten my bottom surgery. And I was just prepared for it. I was prepared that, you know, I was going to go through all of these different things and none of that stuff ever happened to me. So I think that it's really just more about hygiene and the way that you, you know, do your stuff. If you do your stuff properly, I don't think that you'll suffer, you know, having to go through a bunch of different things. But also a large part of that is going to be making sure that you do semi-regularly if you're a person who is, you know, constantly, constantly, constantly over dilating and things of that nature. Now, while you are dilating, one of the things that you are gonna need, child, is some puppy pads, girl, pup pads. Now, these I got from the Target. They were on clearance. They were 10 bucks and I got 25 large pads and I got two of these. Um, and I cut them in half sometimes just because I don't have as much like stuff coming out. Now, like when I was still like two weeks post-op, a week post-op or whatever the case may be, I would have a lot of like blood and tissue and all type of stuff coming up out of there as I was dilating. So I needed like a, you know, I needed my pads. Now I don't necessarily need them as much. Now I kind of just like lay down a towel or something like that. Um, and I throw those in the washer and I'm kind of just, you know gone on those so i would say like if you're pre prepping for things like to get like directly after surgery i would say make sure you have at least a month's worth of these just in case your your body is different than mine and you like have a lot more secretions than mine you know but i will say like one box of these like i i only finished one box and i'm like barely scraping at the top of this box um and now that i'm using the towels and stuff i probably won't even finish this box i'll probably use this for my actual dog um and so basically you just want to make sure you have some of these because you will ruin your bed sheets you will ruin things like i don't know if you all um if girls who have had the surgery like report having a smell i don't report like any of the things having a smell i just didn't like the look of stuff and then like there's definitely blood in there so like you don't want to stain your sheets and anything like that especially if you're a girl who has like light colored sheets and things of that nature so you're gonna want to get these while you're dilating make sure that you're sitting on them um if you are choosing not to wear like recoverative things or whatever the case may be you want to make sure that you have some of these lying around because they're going to be super important now one of my tricks for dilation that made dilation bearable were jolly ranchers now i know some of y'all are like what like what do you mean like you putting jolly ranchers up in your you know what i'm saying but like i am not the trick to dilating the first week because it felt so awkward and it feels just so like weird to have this thing inside your body and it's like a whole new hole and you're trying to get used to the sensation and all that stuff. My trick was whenever I would dilate before I put in my dilator, I would pop two Jolly Ranchers, right? And I would preoccupy my mind with the flavor of something super sweet and like I would lay back in the tub and I would just have my dilator, you know, in there. I would be sucking on my Jolly Ranchers and I would like listen to Twitter spaces and like listen to people go off on people. Or I would play some music and like, you know, just lay in the tub and just listen to things and suck on my Jolly Ranchers. And when my Jolly Rancher was gone, if I, you know, if it, you know, I would pop another one. Usually about four Jolly Ranchers would get me through one dilation period because I would like to dilate for an hour. The whole 15 minutes, the whole 30 minutes, twice a day, I ain't got time for that. I want to be done with this. So I would do an hour once a day every day 
and four Jolly Ranchers usually got me through it. So by the time I was on my third Jolly Rancher, like once I popped that fourth one, that fourth one is like getting me up out of the tub or off of the bed or whatever the case may be. But it distracted me from that weird feeling of having it just inside me just sitting there. Now, nowadays, I don't need it as much. Like I pop them every now and then, like if I'm just like, I don't want to dilate, but I know that I have to dilate. So let me find something to distract myself. I will use the Jolly Rancher trick then. But in those beginning stages, like that first two weeks of dilation, I could not dilate if I did not have Jolly Ranchers. It was really, really bad. So if you're somebody who doesn't like that weird feeling either, or, you know, if you're a girl who's prepping for surgery, I'm telling you this trick will work for you. Find your favorite candy. It doesn't have to be Jolly Ranchers. Mine just happens to be like, as far as hard candies go, mine happens to be Jolly Ranchers. You can suck on whatever you would like, child, for your dilation period. I just chose to do Jolly Ranchers because it was a sweet distraction. So keep that in mind, keep that in mind, keep that in mind. Now, once you get, you know, home and you're like good and out of the like the beginning stages and phases of everything, the things that I find to be staples now are I love yogurt. Now, yogurt was a huge thing for me in the beginning anyway, but now that I've had surgery, I definitely like lean on my yogurt. I need it probiotic health. It keeps the mucuses flowing and stuff down there to make sure that you can continue to self-lubricate. The lies about us not being able to self-lubricate are completely untrue. Don't let anybody tell you that you're going to not be able to lubricate yourself or that you're going to constantly and forever and always need lube. That is not always true. And it's hella hella transphobic like people use it as a means to try to invalidate the experience of trans women and even if you've had bottom surgery they try to use it to invalidate the experience of your vagina but you can definitely self-lubricate i know that i can a lot of doctors who are qualified in the surgeries now definitely you know have found ways to ensure that you self-lubricate um and like i said i do self-lubricate i don't have any issues you know having to put anything down there, you know, without lubrication. Um, so please be mindful that keeping that health up is gonna be good. Now, you don't necessarily want to have like a bunch of flavored yogurts. I just prefer flavored yogurts, but you can get like a regular vanilla yogurt. And these just kind of keep those, you know, mucous membranes open and keep all of that stuff flowing. Um, so I make sure that I have like a yogurt a day or something like that, and that gets me through because we love yogurt out in these parts. And I am a sucker for a good yogurt flip, Chobani flip, because I love the little crunch and all that stuff that I get when I get my Chobani flips. Now, coming right out of the hospital, I know some of y'all are going to be like, what hope? But when I was in the hospital or when I was like, after my two weeks, when I was at my hotel and my doctor would come and visit, he gave me like these nice thick, cushy little pads, right? And they weren't necessarily like, you know, pads that you put in your panties, but they were just like little cushy, like square-like pads. And I wanted to replace those with something that felt more like a pad, but gave me front to back um, protection. And so rather than go and get a regular pad, I opted out for the poise pads, which if you all know, they're kind of like the you know like for older folks or folks who don't necessarily have as good a control over their bladder now because of the amount that like i was bleeding and like you know all the other stuff that was coming up out of there you know so that you can make way for everything to be what it was i wanted something that felt cushy i wanted something that felt whatever it wasn't for the fashion of it all it was just you know, so that I didn't have to have this pad that moves around. This one stuck to my underwear. This one, you know, kept itself in place. And so I loved it. And then I also liked it because it was long front to back protection. I like the front to back protection. I don't know if it's just me being new to this whole idea or this new portion of womanhood, but I know I've heard a lot of like cisgender women complain about the front to back. I love the front to back. The front to back does not bother me. And so I got these for like when I first, first got home and I felt like, mm, I'm not sure what's happening here. I don't know what's going on. I don't want to be bleeding all over the place or whatever. And as y'all can see, I used the entire pack. I only got one left. Um, every now and then I would like to switch back and forth between these and my panty liners, but, um, that is my, you know, my thing. And my favorite panty liner now, I wear these all day, every day, just to kind of sort of keep my underwear intact. 
These are the Always Anti-Bunch Extra Projection, extra long, y'all. I love the extra long. I need the front to back. Like, I, I need the front to back. I don't know about y'all, but I need the front to back. And the reason that I love these, I'm going to show y'all, because I bought some other ones. When I went to Columbia, I didn't pack enough of these, so I had to get Kotex. And Kotex has that cotton thing here in the center one I could feel that cotton and it felt like it was drying me and then also irritating me at the same time and I didn't like that and I'm not sure if that's just because right now I can't wax or shave or anything you know at least until next month um and so I'm not sure if maybe that's a part of the issue but I also realized like immediately like, as soon as I pulled my panties up with those on I, I just felt dry like I felt like Sahara <laughs> like you know I just felt dry when I put my panties on with those these because of the way that this is made there's like this really breathable airy like sort of like meshy almost fabricy moment here and then underneath that is the cotton like strip piece and i appreciate that because one what also happens is when i use the kotex because it is just like cotton the the stuff sits on the top and you you gotta look at it you know and i i didn't like i don't i didn't like looking at the blood or you know the discharge i don't i don't like looking at it with these all of that stuff seeps like underneath this little fabric layer that i was telling y'all about it kind of just seeps right underneath that layer and when you pull off the panties you can kind of see under there but you can't see everything now i don't know about y'all but for me, that was like a big thing for me that I appreciated about these that I didn't appreciate with the Kotex. And so this is my brand. This is going to be my brand until the day that I die. As far as panty liners are concerned, I love these. I absolutely love these. I love these. These are my shit. Um, I'm rocking with these to the wheels fall off. You know, like I really do appreciate these just because they give me comfort. I don't feel them once I put them on. And then on top of that, like I said, I don't have to look at the discharge or whatever else is coming up out of there when I do take them off and change my underwear and all that jazz. So I really appreciate the Always brand for that. And I will say there has not been a day since surgery that I do not wear a panty liner. Um, I have not been comfortable enough just yet to not wear my panty liner. So I wear them everywhere. Um, and whenever I have on panties, which is every day, all day. Because I love underwear. Now, something that is a little different um, that is new uh, <laughs> that did help with my recovery process is the co2 v lift okay now my good friend who is a bodybuilder and a doctor and surgeon partnered up with her good friend to bring us the carbo because um, child the names the carbo the carboxy therapy vaginal rejuvenation treatment now they started with this uh study and this therapy on cisgender women and then decided that you know they wanted to see how this worked with trans women right and they had tried it on trans women who had already had the surgery who had had the the, the bottom surgery srs whatever you want to call it for years right and they recognized that they got good results the girls were telling them that things were going great um and all of that jazz and all of that, you know, just it. And so what happens is they asked me if I would be willing to be one of the first girls to try it immediately following my surgery. Now, because I know these women are about their stuff and like they're legit, I was willing to try it. But I tried it a little bit differently. So they have this gel and powder solution mixture that you're supposed to mix up yourself you put it into this syringe here and then you press this piece into your vagina getting all of that in there it tightens it helps to moisten the vagina and all that good stuff and that is how you do it because i did not want it to work so well that it healed my vagina from the inside and messed everything up i only used it on the outer labia portion of my vagina while everything was still like raw before things changed to like that natural cute little brown color that is supposed to be down there brown on the outside pink on the inside you know that's what it's supposed to be given and so while everything was still kind of like doing what it was doing and healing up and doing all of the things I would mix the mixture together and then I would use gloved fingers to rub it on the outer labias where things had not healed. And what I can say, y'all, was 
in the time span of, I believe I had enough to last me one, two, three, four. So I had enough for a week's trial. So I, in the time span of the week that I used it, I saw dramatic, like dramatic healing on the outer labias of my vagina. I like things started to brown up really quickly, swelling and stuff started to go down. Like everything started to just come together when I started to use this CO2 Vita Lift. Um, and there's even like a little instructional guide here on the back that shows you like how to do it. And like what I was telling y'all, I use it just on the outer portion, but you can use it on the like the inside of the vagina. Um, if you're a person who like is struggling with like wetness or whatever the case may be. Um, and so it's the CO2 lift. The creator is Lana Kerr. If you want to look her up on the Instagrams and all that stuff, I will make sure that I put all of that um, in the description box if you're wanting to try that. But it definitely helps with my healing process. And that's just a little trick for me to you. Ain't nobody else got this because ain't nobody else, you know, <laughs> popping. So if you want to, you know, start to use this or utilize this, like I said, I, used, I didn't start using this until I got home, so it was about three weeks post-op before I started to use this. But when I tell y'all the dramatic results that I saw just within a week of using the CO2 uh, vaginal rejuvenation um, cream and serum was amazing. My final little tip and trick for you all is about after a month, I started to invest in my summer's eve, right? Uh, I know that there is a particular smell that came from my vagina that I did not like. And I think it was mostly just like a bloody, like a mix of bloody and, you know, whatever secretions are coming out of there. But I don't typically like the smell of blood. It is not, it doesn't work for me. And then whatever else was happening in there was probably also mixing. Now, granted, it wasn't like it was this strong stench of a smell either. How and so ever. I just didn't like it, so I invested in Summer's Eve. I also got Vagisil, but Vagisil kind of sort of agitated my vagina a little bit. So I decided against the Vagisil because I felt like it might have just been too strong or something like that for my particular vagina. But whatever works for you, I would recommend getting a feminine wash of some sort. I use the Summer Eve and it's just because it has the, the odor remover, the pH balances, and then it's also free from dyes and all that other stuff, which I really appreciate. I think that Vagisil claims the same things, but Vagisil definitely has like a, a fragrance and, you know, all of that other stuff where like Summer's Eve says that it has a scent, but like, I don't know. It doesn't really smell like too much of anything to me. Um, and so there's no dye. It comes out clear. It's like really nice and sudsy. I get in there and I do the front and the back, uh, just to make sure everybody's matching up and all that jazz. And this saves me so much trouble from having to feel like I have a stinky cooch. Now it's not giving fish or anything. It was just giving like blood and like stuff like that. I've noticed that I don't smell it you know anymore like now that I'm like on month two but I still use this just because I ain't got time for the stinky cooch I just I don't I, I don't you know so like that's 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 my little tip and trick so two months post op those are my tips and tricks those are the things that I wish that I would have known before I you know left the hospital or before I you know got SRS surgery just like things that were a little bit more in depth about the way that I can take care of my vagina post-surgery like the, the the first couple of weeks post-surgery and these are just some things that I wanted to come and share with y'all so with that being said I hope that y'all are enjoying my tips and my tricks I hope that y'all can use some of these things I hope that you know you're out here you know vibing with the stuff of course drink you some water get you some sugar-free uh cranberry juice not cranberry juice cocktail because you want to make sure that you're not peeing gold okay you want to make sure that you're nice and, and hydrated and all that good stuff um life water uh perrier and i have been living off of you know um my mandarin oranges and things like that when i really want something super sweet um and yeah, so I hope that these things help y'all. I hope that y'all utilize them. I hope that uh, the tips and tricks kind of get you through those beginning steps of SRS, like immediately after surgery. And with that being said, peace, love, and hope. And I will catch y'all next month so I can tell y'all about how she's showing up for month three and what is it giving and what is it looking like and feeling like. It's going to be a jam. All right. Peace, everybody. Bye.